quite a visit to the famous Zimbabwe ruins, though it's accepted that they are not prehistoric. But to scientists dedicated to the study of man's origin and development, the Zimbabwe ruins still pose an unsolved riddle. He was a world authority on Zimbabwe. She is Dr. G. Caton Thompson, who carried out excavations here some 25 years ago. But lacking proof, all opinions on its origin are as yet conjecture. One theory makes much of a Phoenician influence, another connected with the Arab slave traders and gold seekers, while yet another suggests Zimbabwe was built by the Bantu something like 800 years ago. Conjecture, that is all. Will the mystery ever be solved? Scientifically speaking, who knows? Before a record crowd of 20,000 in Salisbury, the British Isles touring team takes the field against Rhodesia. With photographers expecting a field day, the Lions kick off, and there's an early thrill as wing three quarter O'Reilly is brought down just short of Rhodesia's try line. It was a fairly narrow escape, and it put Rhodesia on their toes. In actual fact, it was the home side which scored first with a penalty, but the score was leveled off at three all by Baker's penalty. In the 26th minute, Griffiths put in a good run, drew the defence, and gave O'Reilly the opportunity of scoring behind the posts. It was converted and the Lions led 8-3. It's Rhodesia on the attack. Not a very clear-cut attack, but they work the ball upfield with a scrambling movement, and good following up is halted only by dour defence. As a side, the Rhodesians appear to lack cohesion and flagrant high tackling was responsible for letting Williams through for a converted try, making it 13-3. Then just on half-time, Bartman goaled a penalty to make the score 13-6 at the changeover. The score remained at 13-6 until another Baker penalty raised the British Isles' lead to 16-6. At this stage, Radisha rallied in an attempt to narrow the deficit, and they started to whittle it down with a penalty by Bartman making it 16-9 much the delight of the younger supporters. A line out near the Rhodesian line looked dangerous until pressure was released. Then in the line 25, a slow heel caught Lagrange off balance. Taking the ball with his feet, Lowe kicked up field, but Kit Kat was there to save the situation. As the last defence for Rhodesia, he played a sterling game. Time and again, the fast-moving British three-quarters resorted to the kick and follow-up. They put the pressure on Kit Kat, but he proved cool in his catching and clearing. But for him, the score would have mounted. However, the Rhodesian side, without the advantage of playing together as frequently as the Lions, did well to hold the British Isles touring team to a narrow 16-12 victory. Up Luantia Way, all roads seem to lead to Makoma Dam, for the first federal speedboat regatta held under the auspices of the Central African Powerboat Association. All trimmed and ready, and the crowd settles back as the pilots give it the gun. On the first day, two records went by the board, or should we say by the art board. E. Gallias of Macoma set a D-class record of 53 miles an hour, and B. Linforth of Wingate Salisbury set a B-class record of 46.8. On the second day, this last record was up to 52.6, by E. Palmery of Lusaka. Yes, these babies were really moving. I say there, have a care there. Ah, well, it was a roaring success in every sense. And anyone who managed to get the checkered flag deserved their victory. There's lots of tinkering, checking on carburetors, ignition and maps, before the Indola Car Club's 1,800-mile motor rally. And Mayor Catchpole gets the first starters away. The rally was for cars of all sizes, in fact the smaller cars held an advantage, and this is not the time for cracks about women drivers. Most of the long journey was carried out over rough roads, and under rally rules each stage is completed and registered under official check. By the final test that wound up proceedings, Tony Brown of Indola driving a Ford Anglia was in the lead, and did nothing whatsoever to blot his copybook. Brown's driving drew universal approval, and so did Norman Wright of Luantia handling a jet. Some of the
protests definitely favoured the smaller cars. This intricate slalom event for one. It was tricky even for the little fellows, but nothing daunted, the Jaguar dropped very few points. It was driving of a high order. The crowd kept its eye on what the drivers were doing, even if the drivers didn't. The prizes were presented by Mrs. Frank Owen. Tony Brown won the major event, but there was enthusiastic applause for many excellent performances. Standing by you, ever guard you, and the rivers wash your spirit bright and clean. May the animals and birds sing of the peace that is to come, and not the glory of the land that might have been. May God be with you and keep you strong. May your tomorrow. May the life that you have taken be for reason And the pain that you have suffered make you strong May the seeds that have been sown bring out the fullness of the future May God give you the strength to right your wrongs It's just a dream, I know but dreams set you free Dreaming can ease your mind And bring you peace May the sweetness of your soul yet bring you riches And your pastures ever fill your belly's knees that you over find a way to live as one Keep your standards high and not give way to greed May God be with you And keep you strong May your tomorrows be rich and long Yeah. <laughs>